Hello and welcome to Tech Week in View, which week we take the biggest stories, eat them up, spit them out and tell you what we think. Stay tuned. Now we get plenty of rumours here at Megawatt and over at Pocket Lint. Some are just sheer crazy, Apple buying Twitter for example. Some are, well, maybe so-so and some are, well, bang on the money and then the next day the product comes out with everything that the rumours suggested. Well this week saw a PlayStation PS3 rumour which implied that Sony are building a thinner version which is due to be announced at E3 at the beginning of June. To complement the rumour there was, well, spy shots, dodgy spy shots from a Chinese manufacturer supposedly making a slimline PS3. Now what do we think? Well there's, it's a bit touch and go really, I mean there's the majority of me yeah, is inclined to think this is just a rumour that's just been made up by some crazy Chinese manufacturer to get a bit of publicity somewhere. But there's a slight bit of me that thinks wow they slimlined the PS1 didn't they? They slimlined the PS2 PS3 has been around for a couple of years, might be a good way of invigorating some extra, well, oomph. And if it comes out before Christmas, then, well, you know, maybe it's time to finally slump and get a PS3, a slimmer version of that, because let's face it, the current model is a bit on the fat side. Either way, whether it's a rumor that's going to become a reality or just a rumor that we're going to put in the rumor drawer forever as, haha, <laughs> that made us laugh, by the beginning of June and the E3, we should know for sure. So the question many people will be asking this week of have the creators of Twitter turned from being angels to demons after, well, a change, a rather insignificant change to the Twitter service. Basically they made some quick changes to the way the reply works, but unfortunately the 25 million users of the service, well, just cried mutiny, didn't really like what was going on, leading to the end of the week where, well, one of the founders had to say, we've screwed up, I'm sorry. Now the changes have sort of been re, sort of reversed and put back in place, but that's not the story here. The story is, is that suddenly Twitter, the founders, have suddenly found that they have this, this thing, this social phenomenon that has become far more than they have, could ever be. It's almost become a technology of the people as we all move towards talking, or should I say tweeting, to each other a lot more than we have in the past. So another week and another rumour, but basically this time it's all about Microsoft and yet again that Zoom phone that just, well, doesn't keep on, it just won't go away, it's that simple. So what's the rumour this week? Well, that the Zoom phone would eventually come out. And what's the response from Microsoft? Well, they, as usual, just dousing water on it by saying, what are you talking about? Why on earth would we do that? Now we know people on the inside, as obviously you'd expect us to do so, and they say, well, they say nothing that exciting to be honest. They don't say that a Zoom phone is around, they don't say that it's not going to come. What they do say is why, 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 why on earth would Microsoft launch a competing product from a hardware perspective against other manufacturers that it wants to get involved in Windows Mobile. And that for us is pretty much the end of the story. I think personally that a Zoom phone will not come as a phone that Microsoft manufactures but as a piece of software that allows you to either stream music from Windows 7 straight to your Windows mobile phone or a piece of actual software called the Zoom Music Player that will be embedded on every Windows mobile because that's a better option. That allows them to get the Zoom functionality out to everybody rather than just those people that want to buy a Microsoft phone. So this week Vodafone announced it was dropping roaming charges in Europe for the summer. Brilliant, we all cry. That's amazing. It means I can sit on a beach in France, Spain, Italy, and make calls to the people at home to say, ha ha, guess what? I'm in a beach in Spain, in France, in Italy, and it's not going to cost me anything extra because there's no roaming charges. Fantastic. I mean, it's a brilliant news for consumers, and it's certainly showing that mobile operators are starting to mix things up a bit. We've already seen three with their Skype deal of free phone calls, which you know, has only got to be a good thing. And it just means that, well, you know, all of a sudden Europe actually seems to be a bit of a relevant place to be a part of for once, which is, you know, great. The only downside is if you're in a T-Mobile customer, or an Orange customer, or even an O2 customer, well, they haven't announced they're passing on any free roaming packages at the moment. So the only beach you're going to be sitting on this summer is one in London. Hmm. 
Well, that's it for this week's show. Hope you've enjoyed it. Why don't you tune in next time for more news, reviews, tips, tricks, opinions, and much more. I'm Stuart Miles. This is Megawatt TV. Thanks for watching.